All right, what's up, everybody? Back for another retro review here. It's the rap throwback. What's happening, fellas? Dre 40 ounce, aka Soundwave, to my left. And uh, I am Diz Megatron, your host today. And we're going to run through Bone Thugs and Harmony, Creeping on a Come Up. Um, this record came out in, what, 1994? Or, yeah, I think it was 1994. Let me pull up my notes here. So, um, Ruthless Records, that's when this one, this one came out under Ruthless Records, of course, Mm -hmm. like all the Good Bone albums did. Um, let me just zoom in on that year. Yeah, man, 1994. It's a crazy year, 1994. Yeah, so this is post, uh, Doggy Style. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm trying to remember how we heard of Bone. You know, I think that the videos came out first. Was it an MTV video? Mm-hmm. I think you're right. Um, because they were new. Like I never heard of Bone. Right. I didn't really check out uh, Faces of Death. It was called. Right. I don't even know if that tape was in the record stores. To tell think, you the truth. Yeah, I think for that record they went by Bone Enterprise or something like that. Not quite Bone Thugs. It was. I think it was Bone Enterprise for that album. Yeah, Bone Enterprise. They weren't Thugs in Harmony yet. So they weren't on the radar at all. Um, the C or the, uh, I guess, I don't know if it was a single, but the video came out for it, a uh, Thuggish Ruggish Bone. Right. That was all over MTV. Um, they were a new act, so they weren't like all over it like Snoop Dogg and Dre, I don't think. Right. It was a new act and a new style to yeah. at least videos and, you know, the, the commercial piece of it anyway. But they were getting a lot of traction because they had a sound that we had never heard before. Right. Uh, that we w- we would just call it the fast rap. You know, like have you heard these guys are crazy. Fast rap and uh, the harmony part. Yeah. A lot of uh, melodic uh, lines and the, always in harmony. Yeah. Hence the thugs in harmony. And I'm not sure that I remember watching the video that much. I don't remember when I knew that they were under Easy E. Yeah, and I was trying to think, you know, in the video, I don't know if they referenced Easy E, but or if he you was know, in it. The credits would definitely have said Ruthless Records. Yeah, you know what? We'll have to check it out. Right. We'll do a little uh, retrospect on the video. There you go. Um, but I remember getting a phone call from you, or you telling me that you found the tape. Right. You know, and it said featuring Easy E. And I was like, no shit. And I looked at it and I was like, right there in that that red square featuring yep. Easy E. I was like, what? And at this point, you know, I'd started to learn how Ruthless Records was expanding and just getting bigger, you know. In 94, I was still pretty, uh, I don't know, ignorant or just not up on game yet as to who's rolling with who on these labels and mm-hmm. everything. Um, in fact, I think Ruthless was kind of looked at as the label that just got their butts kicked by Death Row. Right. It's um, true. So they needed a, a comeback and man, did they get one with bone? That was gold. The resurgence there, a little bit uh, of Ruthless Records that definitely uh, brought them back. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what was all going on, but as we, you know, we hear interviews with all the artists that were under ruthless around this time. And there were talks about some of them leaving and right. You know, death row was trying to get above the law originally. And, you know, there were like these riffs and MC Ren wasn't really hanging out as much. Well, it was almost like, uh, it was death row versus easy E there. Easy E didn't have a lot of backup on the label, you know? So it was, uh, you had all of death row dissing ruthless and easy, but not a lot of people riding with easy. No, it's, it looked like, um, Ruthless was just a thing of the past, right. almost. But uh, I think Bone was kind of the resurgence for Ruthless and put them back on the map. Um, I mean, they never left the map. Easy always kept the lights on. You know, everybody loved Easy E. But uh, Bone gave them another branch, you know, and another audience. Basically, just 
like gave him a, a more money for like another decade or so, you know. Uh, they were big. It was dope. The resurgence of Ruthless, pretty much thanks to Bone Thugs and Harmony in 1994. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, when we look at 94, 95, 96, there were a lot of artists that started getting pumped out of Ruthless. A little bit of a golden age there, in yeah. those, those years there. Yeah. But for me, Bone was kind of the, um, like, hey, check it out. Ruthless is still open. And I, I was like, damn, it sure was. Um you know, we'll talk about some of the producers here after we go through it, but we could see, you know, we got DJ Unique and mm-hmm. Rhythm D on here. Um, DJ Yella. And Yella, of course, yeah. But if you would have told me, like, hey, uh, Ruthless ain't nothing without Dr. Dre, and this comes out, I'm like, you're out of your mind. You guys are dope, man. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, 1994, that's kind of what the the attitude was anyways around us um, in in the gangster rap world anyways, as when it comes to Ruthless, Death Row, West Coast rap. Uh, even though this is from Cleveland, you know, it's got a West Coast sound for sure. It does. So, um, you know, what I would say there were no expectations from the last record because we just didn't hear that last record. So this is like, we would call it like their debut, you know. Yep. This is uh, the first record that Bone came out with. Uh, that's kind of how I feel about it anyways. Uh, there was no Bone featured on even any Easy e songs or nothing. I think they had a little cameo in HWA, but I don't remember yes. when that if that came out first. Uh, yeah, and even them having that little cameo, um, I don't think I ever really you know, heard that cameo and was like, oh, who are those guys? I just kind of took it as part of the song. You know, I didn't really yeah. think too much of it, at least yeah. back then. So let's go ahead and check out the album. We'll run through it. I'll put a link up for you guys to check out uh, what we're talking about in the SoundCloud as we run through each track. And then uh, we will be back for our conclusion and our thoughts on it. So... So we just ran through the album in its entirety. Yeah. Not very long. No. Great, great, perfect length almost, you know, for that EP. Yeah. It was uh, jam-packed with good shit. I didn't feel like there was any filler in it. Yeah. And we didn't really dig into the artwork yet. Right. Let's go ahead and go through that and then we'll give our thoughts on the record itself you know we talked about it a little bit in in that uh last segment but um you know we got bone here and i assume that's cleveland back there i right i don't know only because they're from cleveland maybe this was taken in la i mean that's got to be east 1999 right there if i had to guess yeah and they're all looking g'd up for sure yeah they're and all that's flesh in the back I was going to say, it, it probably is Cleveland based on the way they're dressed. You know, they're dressed to stay warm. Doesn't look like it was very warm out. Nah. Yeah, I'd have to guess that that's Cleveland out there. Uh, the Whoever drew that skull graphic, I wish I knew who did that. Mm-hmm. Um, was that cartoon or who knows? Right. But it became an iconic graphic or an iconic Skull, you know. Yeah. Became they, an icon. For they bone. used it a lot, but not mm-hmm. so much lately, I feel. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, the cool creeping on a come up, the lettering there is crazy. It's such yeah. a dope font. Well, yeah. I don't even know if I it's mean, a it's font. probably hand drawn. Well, I mean, I'm looking at the E's. Yeah. And they're so similar. Like, I, I studied this font because I'm a geek. But yeah, I really think that there's similar but subtle differences in how the middle cross hash comes across. Yeah. I think it was hand drawn because I'd never seen it used again anywhere right. or anything. It's pretty dope though. And then on the inside here we have that cool picture of uh you know, bone there all the members are here. It's like they're jumping off of jumping well, over a wall or it's something. It's like they're trying to get away from something. Yeah. But uh, you've got, who's that front dude there? That'd be Busy up front. Busy's leading the pack. He's already on the ground running forward towards the camera. And then mm-hmm. you've got the others jumping down from uh, a building, looks like. 
Yeah, and if I had to guess, I would say that's busy in the front, and then right up above him with the lighter pants, looks like lazy. And this guy right here. What, crazy? Do you think that's crazy or flesh? Well, there's four of them, so I don't know if that's flesh. It's really hard to tell. Yeah. The other ones. And it's like a black and white, too, so it kind of adds a little. Yeah, and they're wearing like black clothes. Yep. You know? So a lot of, you know, the blacks are blending together here. It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah. It's a cool little picture, though. It's uh, it's ghetto. It's gangsta. The CD was pretty dope. Yeah. Just black and red with that skull on the bottom. Like, damn. Nothing like a black and red CD, man. Those two colors complement each other the best. Yeah, this uh, this gave it a real gangsta vibe. You know, whatever Ruthless was trying to get out, they nailed it. And Ruthless rolled with that red color a lot. Like, their logos were always red. Yeah, they did roll with that red logo a lot. Mm-hmm. I really liked it. And the back of the album was pretty sweet, too. You know, they re- they put that skull back there with the two glocks. Right. Um, East 1999 in St. Clair. Cracks in the road. Yep. And you got that hand-drawn street, mm-hmm. the street post. It's all hand-drawn. Yep. And then, of course, the Ruthless logo. It was perfect. Pretty badass. So, great artwork. Uh, what'd you think of the uh, album overall? You know, um, well, you know, how do you feel about it as a whole? Yeah, the the EP I felt was the perfect length. You know, an EP is kind of like a, a sample or a taste mm-hmm. of what an album would be. And I think uh, Easy E came in with a certain idea of what he wanted Bone Thugs to sound like. Uh, he brought in Yella, Rhythm D. Um, and then DJ Unique, which, you know, we kind of figured out is kind of like their exclusive producer. Um, but he brought and put together a sound that was perfect for Bone Thugs and kind of gave him a template to move forward with, I feel like, at least as far as the Ruthless catalog is concerned. Um, but I thought it was perfect. You know, I, you, you're not going to get an EP much better than that. Yeah, the uh, EP was a, uh, it was a, uh, it was pr- it was short, but man, it sure w- left you wanting to hear more after that. That's for sure. That's probably why their next record was so successful. Yeah, I think. Um, even though it is a short record, you know, what are the highlights? What are, what are some of the highlights? Oh, for you? Uh, the highlights for sure would be, uh, you know, the the vibe of the album was really cool. So hearing the intro was. Uh, pretty amazing you know when you popped it in for the first time it just kind of added to the atmosphere of the album um and then kind of the standouts obviously thuggish ruggish bone um no surrender and then of course you got easy e on there you know um yeah i think that was a easy e is definitely like the highlight yeah i mean even though he's not the star right he's definitely a highlight there definitely gives your uh ep a boost you Mm -hmm. know so I think uh, he he put his name on there, put himself on a track to get these guys out there. I think that helped get Bone Thugs' name out there. You know, that little red rectangular thing with Easy e on the cover. Yeah. So uh, I think he he served his purpose there, getting the the Bone Thugs out there. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah. um, I think DJ Yella, his work on here was a highlight. Uh, he he would I like how he composes things and uh, even though he isn't like a master producer you know like people say like Dr. Dre is or mm-hmm. whatever when he steps in he makes classics so I love that um, what do you think could be better on this record any low lights uh, mo cheese you could drop mo cheese could do without yeah. mo cheese mm-hmm. um, whether you add another track or not you don't have to. Um, I think it's it's good as it is. The only complaint I have is, you know, I never listened to Mochi's. You know, I probably heard it a handful of times. Yeah. Um, but that was always a skipper. Yeah, well, it was the end of the record, and it was like, I don't have to hear this, really. Right. Sorry. Right. And I guess if you're going to have it, you put it in at the end of the album. 
Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't think that necessarily contributed anything to the to the EP. Yeah, um, I think it. I would love for it to be longer. You know, that's probably the only thing that I would say. I'm like, I wish it was longer. It would be cool to get a full length album with this group of producers mm-hmm. and maybe all of them getting one or two more tracks. Yeah, if I could hear another Rhythm D and DJ Yella, you know, along with DJ Unique on here. Right. I'd have been a happy man. I mean, I was still happy, but so yeah. Any standout uh tracks for you? Any uh any standout beats? Um, Down for My Thang is pretty dope. Um, like you we were talking about um shoot that's a dj unique beat there i think right yeah but uh, that one's a standout one for me it's got a cool bass line and the synthesizer's crazy yeah it was Um, it was crazy we're talking about how he dj unique introduces these weird elements right to his uh music and he really helped author what bone was to be for the next like five years Mm -hmm. or so Uh, so that and um you know, standout beats would be No Surrender, uh, Down From a Thing, and probably Thuggish Ruggish Bone. Yeah. Dope. Now, for me, the the lyrics that stand out the most, um, I'd have to say we got uh, Wishbone on No Surrender, um, where he says, put me on my knees, telling me move and I'm dead because I'm killing all y'all bitches, turning them blue suits red. Mm-hmm. And then I'm coming to that funeral to shoot that bitch up because I know that's where y'all bitch is about to meet up. Cop killers all up in my chest. You know, that verse right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that was a good one. That's one of Wish's best verses. I think he nailed it on the album. Um, I think it's my favorite verse on the album. I really felt like nice. that was, uh, yeah, he, was a lot of fun. He definitely nailed that one. Yeah. So if you had to score it, what would you give it, man? I'm going to give it a 9.5. A 9.5. Pretty yep. good. Pretty good. Uh, only complain is Mo Cheese. Mo Cheese. If you didn't yeah. have Mo Cheese, you'd have had a 10. But <laughs> still great. Takes nothing away from the effort that was put into it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I think uh, 9.5 is a great score for it myself. Um, I'm going to give it 9.5 double Glocks. Yeah. That's what we're doing there. The double Glocks. Nice. Uh, it's a great record, man. It's hard to not give it a 10, but, you know, Mochi's could have been left out. You know, it was cool. Whatever. Um, I mean, damn, this is a great debut album. You yeah. Know? It's uh, it's great. They sound polished. They don't sound like rookies. And, you know, easy struck gold finding them. So Definitely think. one of the best EPs you can find. I mean, there's only maybe one that I can think that's better than this. Um, well, don't leave us hanging, man. 100 miles and running. 100, ooh, 100 miles and running. Better yeah. Than creeping on a car. That's up. the only one I can think of that's better than this as yeah. far as an EP is concerned. Well, let us know what you guys think about that, man. Is it better than 100 miles and running or is 100 miles and running better than this one? Yep. Both Ruthless Records. Yep. One has Dre, though. And, of course, NWA, baby. And, you know, speaking of that, Ruthless did EPs a, a good amount, I think, yeah. about it. You know, they were kind of, that was a unique thing to Ruthless Records is that they dropped that EP a lot. Yeah. And I never Easy really, not, I never really thought about it till just now, but that was kind of like a Ruthless Records thing. I didn't see a lot of that from other labels. No, nah, Ruthless really did a lot of EPs back in the day. Smart. Yeah. So that's uh, the rap throwback, wrapping this one up, baby. Bone Thugs and Harmony creeping on a come up. Check us out at rapthrowback.com. Our YouTube channel, subscribe, share that shit. We on Spotify. We're everywhere now. You know, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Get at us, man. Hit us up on the Facebook. Let us know what you think about this in the comments, SoundCloud, or YouTube. And uh, we out for now. Peace. Peace. <laughs>